Looking to build a dividend portfolio? Searching for stocks that'll pay you consistent and stable monthly income? I'll be breaking down two of the most stable and consistent Canadian REITs that pay a high monthly dividend. Normally, I would recommend avoiding high yield stocks because it's not sustainable in the long run. However, the stock price of these two REITs has taken such a hit in this crisis filled 2020 that they appear to be oversold and undervalued. It might be a good time to snag both of these at a deep discount. The first stock I'll be recommending is Smart REIT. Please know I own Smart REIT. I have around $10,000 invested in this company. I actually used to invest in them when they were called Callaway before the merger, around, I think it was around eight years ago. It's actually called Smart Centers REIT, but I just use Smart REIT for short. The ticker symbol on the TSX is SRU.UN. Smart REIT is one of the largest retail REITs in Canada, with around 166 properties with $10.4 billion in assets. Smart REIT is currently trading just above $20 per share. Their distributions are $1.80 per year, which equates to around a 9% yield, and they pay monthly. They were trading at $33 per share pre-crash and quickly tanked 50% to $15 per share. They've slowly been climbing back up. I think this stock was oversold and there's still a massive upside. It's still a 40% discount from their 52 week high. Many people have been advising to avoid REITs during this market downturn, but if you try to look at their fundamentals and look at their tenants, you can find winners like this one. 60% of their tenants are considered essential businesses. Their biggest tenant is Walmart. They also have Loblaws, Shoppers Drug Mart, and all five big banks. All these tenants have remained open during lockdown and quarantine. This has helped Smart REIT keep a very high 97.8% occupancy rate as of Q2 2020, which is very impressive. This is partly why I view their distribution as safe and I think this is a safe investment. They've almost built, almost built a recession proof strategy, but let's be real, this could be just the beginning and we have no idea where the economy will go. Looking at this snippet from the CEO's message to shareholders, they've been able to collect majority of their rents, actually increasing every month. As of July, they were able to collect 85% of their rent. Looking at this picture from their Q2 2020 MDNA, they've obviously taken an effort to increase liquidity from Q1 2020, with an increase of around 550 million in available cash. They're currently sitting at 1.2 billion in available cash to help withstand any further hardships or rough times. In the future, I wanna create a video on how to read financial statements and especially how to read REIT statements. The income statement is not a good indicator of a REIT's performance. Let's take a look at Smart REIT's income statement. They have 229 million in net rental income, which is great, slightly lower than last year, but that is to be expected. But take a look at net income. They have a $69 million loss in 2020, almost 250 million less than last year. But what happened here? Take a look at this line, fair value adjustments on revaluation properties. This is why the net income isn't good for REITs. It says their properties went down in value, which sucks, but also they weren't planning on selling them anyway. A REIT buys income producing properties, holds them and earns rental income. So whether or not fair value increases or decreases is not the biggest deal. Let's turn the tables a little. If fair value went up $260 million for their assets, it looks good, but it still doesn't matter too much because the properties wouldn't be sold anyway. The only way to get that additional 260 million is to sell all your properties, which doesn't make sense because they won't be able to own any rental income after they sell everything. My last point on financial statements, if you don't like the way they're income statement looks, take a look at the next page, take a look at their cash flow from operating activities. Looking at Smart Reads cash flow statement, almost 126 million in cash from their normal operations. This tells you the company is doing well so far and continually and can continually fund their distributions just from their operations. A good thing about living in Toronto is Smart Reads has a lot of properties, a lot of plazas around here. So I, I actually drive by and I see their plazas. So what do I notice about their properties every time I drive by? Their parking lots have always been packed. During quarantine, during lockdown, there's still lots of traffic, so it's a good sign if you're an investor. The second REIT I'll be recommending is RioCan. I personally don't own any shares. I wish I did, but I think my portfolio and my whole life in general is too deep into real estate. So I decided to forego on, forego on RioCan, but I might invest in them in the future. The ticker symbol is REI.UN. It's also one of the largest retail REITs in Canada with around 221 properties with an asset value of 11.7 billion as of Q2 2020. Current stock price is around 15.25 per share and their current yield is 9.47%. They pay dividends monthly. 
they were trading near $28 per share pre-crisis and quickly tanked to $12, so over a 50% drop. They've slowly climbed back up to $15, which is still a 40% discount from their 52-week high. They're currently paying a dividend of $1.44 per share, or around $0.12 cents per month. I'm looking into their Q2 financial statements, to get, which will give us a better picture on whether or not it's a good investment and if their dividends are stable. They've been able to maintain a 96% occupancy throughout the lockdown. This will obviously change as we progress through the year, but some, you know, some tenants might not make it, but halfway through the year and still at 96%, it, it's great. Looking at a breakdown of their top 10 tenants, Canadian Tire, Loblaws, Walmart, all of these are looking good. The only ones I'm worried about are these restaurants. Let's be honest, the, these aren't the best restaurants and they've been struggling recently, but they only make up 1.7% of the total revenue. Reading a small snippet about liquidity, they have around $1 billion in cash or undrawn, undrawn lines of credit available. Considering their monthly dividend requirements are only $30 million, this reserve should be more than enough to continue and pay dividends and continually pay down debt and further invest in the business. Looking at their Q2 income statement, they've taken a slight haircut on their fair values of their investment properties. They have a $475 million loss in value. Again, it sucks to see such a massive loss in value, but in terms of running a REIT, this isn't the end of the world. It's a temporary setback. We should focus more on their cash flow from operations. Looking at their cash flow, they've been able to generate almost $239 million in cash from their ongoing business. This is a healthy number in my mind, but also, what do I know? Without spending too much time on their financials and reading every line of their MDNA, I do believe Rio Ken is a safe and stable dividend payer, but also I think there's massive upside in capital appreciation of the stock. I think it's great for any portfolio. Keep in mind, there are more important metrics to worry about when it comes to REITs, such as funds from operations, adjusted funds from operations, and adjusted cash flow from operations. But let's save all those for another video. I'll be creating more of these stock analysis videos due to their popularity. I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting great reception, a lot of comments and requests for more. So let me know of any other stocks you'd like me to review. I'm going to be choosing two more REIT stocks for my next video. Thanks guys.